So I'm curious to hear about your um, what futures is and now you have done your part as a program assistant, mm -hmm. as an associate, as an assistant, assistant program, program officer. officer, and you're growing, you're, you're, you're going into all these counties, you're mm -hmm. having all these experiences, and that now you start becoming more in charge of the program after yeah. Angela mm -hmm. leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. even before I go there, so this Moyala story, mm -hmm. You know, the trip was so long going, mm -hmm. we weren't, it wasn't going to be feasible mm. to come back mm. on the lorries. Mm. So we had enough mm -hmm. money to mm. charter, to come back with the chartered flights, right. the Mira flights now, mm. because they are empty. Mm. So we, we, we go there and everything was very informal, mm. which was surprising to me. Mm. Because I mean, if you've flown before, you know, the etiquette or rather the procedure, procedure is very, you know, mm. formal mm. and strict. Mm. So here it really is what, and you've given out 6K, it's really pretty much the it's, amount of money that you have. Mm. And so um, I'm told if they just stay around, mm. if you hear a flight, <laughs> just come, come grab your things and run. Oh. And I'm thinking, so there's no time. Okay. Like... So the first day I stay in, I never hear anything. Mm. Mm. So the next day I said, okay, I'll just go around. No, I'm a, shopping mm. so i went to the ethiopia mm -hmm. side and mm. shopped mm. and i didn't I, I guess i get i got too engrossed mm. i never had the flight so when i mm. came back to the place where i was sleeping oh i never had the end of it no, it, so they, wait there's no departure time there's no there's boarding no, time nah, nah, those nah, things are, those, that's non-existent it's yeah. just when you hear and so um so the next time they tell me you're not getting out of this place you are gonna keep because you here. Miss. yeah you'll miss because you've missed the first one mm. And, and it was the first time for me to witness that word of mouth actually counted. Oh my goodness. And so, yes, and it, that flight apparently was leaving a bit early. So I slept in mm. and the next thing I hear is people banging onto my door about mm. to break the door and they're mm. like, Mama, Toka, Mstana, Toka, the live, flight live, is live, leaving. Live. Oh, wow. And so we go Ooh. into this place. So you didn't hear it come No, either. I didn't either. I didn't. I. I I think I yeah. have very poor listening because that's no, not the you, orientation you, you, you have about. <laughs> you probably have also good sleep. Uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so we go mm. and we are in this. So I'm expecting mm. a flight that, you know, with proper chairs, mm. it's two benches and we're facing each other. Oh, I'm like, me, what the you. heck? Mm. And then there isn't a safety belt. belt. Whoa. So pretty much Whoa. you get up uh, you all Swing. hang on to each other. And, and how long is the flight from Wale to Nairobi? Why are you coming to Nairobi? Remember, yes. You're lying there too It was the most, Shady. because it's a very light mm, flight, mm. it was the most turbulent. Is Karen Mira? No, it's not Karen, it's empty now. Mm. It was so Ooh. frightening. It was so frightening. I'm telling you, by the time we how landed. How many of you are on board? Um, about 20 people. It was very frightening extremely frightening praying to your gods lord yes, get me to nairobi yes, yes, land yes. me safely but it was the experience of a lifetime so came back oh and like goodness. i said uh they did feel like it was real dedication yeah on my part yeah yeah to go to those lands yeah and so i got a promotion oh nice out of that it yeah. was a pretty nice mm. yeah mm. so i was mm. now in charge of the program mm. and not immediately but mm. after mm. my boss left mm. i became in charge of the program mm. Mm. And here I was mm. having to fill in somebody pretty senior, senior mm. their shoes. And mm. I wasn't sure that I was mm. ready to do that mm. or able to do that. Mm. Mm. And but fortunately, there was a grant, mm. uh, a training grant, mm -hmm. and it allowed me to go to Oxford University mm. to train mm. uh, on this. They had a futures program. Mm. And so that was my first formal training on, on futures. futures. I, I also would like to mention that uh, because of the, this kind of learning institution, we were encouraged a lot mm. to go back to school. Mm. And mm. so I did, uh, I started a master's mm -hmm. at Nairobi University, but I was so tired of exams mm. and reading mm. that I was going for the mechanics mm. of it. Mm. So um, it took a bit of, a, of time because mm. I would then have to go to class after mm. to do the parallel program. Mm -hmm. Um, again, I, I did it, you know, perhaps be influenced by these conversations I'm having in the field. Mm -hmm. and, and it was very fascinating to, mm. to just have conversations at that level. Mm. And, and so I did sociology but, okay. uh, and rural development. Mm. Uh, and 
and it had some elements of international development yeah, yes. so there was there was mm. a bit of you know mm. it coincided a little bit with mm. international relations mm. but i was a bit unserious i was mm. doing it for the mechanics mm. of it mm. and so when i i took so long to mm. start a thesis mm. and when it, i eventually did mm. Uh, the system was also such that uh, you know sometimes you go back and you're told you never did this class mm. which i had already done mm. so it became really complicated with mm. this travel schedule that mm. i dropped out mm. Mm. so i joke that I'm, i have a, y- an y- element of school dropout ness <laughs> in myself uh, <laughs> at university of nairobi mm. Mm. Uh, but mm-hmm. um i i did this mm. you know as a program officer mm-hmm. then i needed mm. to start designing programs yeah and so fundraise mm. and you know i need to play the part yeah that was another stretch for yeah, me but yeah. a good one mm. and the program itself mm. it sold itself because mm. this this conversations that we were having mm-hmm. it was interesting so we were talking about kenya in 10 years mm-hmm. so this so in in talking about in kenya in 10 years you have debates about which scenario is mm. likely mm. why do you think so mm-hmm. etc mm. but you're doing this so that people can in a sense critically think about mm. the change process that kenya needs to go through to mm-hmm. become a, a successful country mm. so In, in if you've seen that piece of work it's called Kenya the crossroads scenarios for a future which i consider one of the most brilliant pieces of work i have ever seen mm-hmm. did in a sense bring out the fact that by 2000 mm-hmm. Kenya actually had all the ingredients for mm-hmm. a civil conflict mm-hmm. so one of the scenarios was called the el nino scenario mm-hmm. the second one was called maendeleo and this was about economic development and what out that outcome would look like mm-hmm. The third one was about political change, constitutional change. Mm. In that scenario we were saying given the different interests that Kenyans have mm-hmm. and the contestation we have about how we should be governed, mm. perhaps it would be a very tough road to mm. take mm. and one that would really need good will. Mm-hmm. And at the point when it doesn't people don't really agree then you could you mm. know mm. spiral back. The mm-hmm. economic one was suggesting that Kenya had a lot of potential because of the geographical positioning. Right. but the is get yes mm. but um again depending on governance mm. you could grow fast but then have very unequal distribution of this wealth uh, that mm. you get mm. then the third one which was a bit of a late comer mm-hmm. into the scenarios was a bit more aspirational mm-hmm. and it was saying that if Kenya was to achieve its ideal mm-hmm. vision mm. it needed to go through economic and political fundamental economic and political mm. changes mm. so these are the conversations have, i'm having in local mm. languages mm. in different parts of the mm. of mm. the country sometimes mm. having to rope in a few professionals to yeah mm. to interpret mm. so that was very fascinating mm. for me mm. and so in a sense remember i came into this work not knowing what i was called to do mm-hmm. so in a sense this became a defining mm. moment of what i think mm. i should become mm. in the future mm-hmm. a futurist mm-hmm. right mm. and it, it was even uh, cemented much more because within about mm. uh, seven years of this work mm. we went almost word for word through three of the four scenarios mm. so um kibaki takes over right in 2002 and his first economic plan I mean his first uh, sort of like policy document is a uh, ERS work yeah. which is economic recovery strategy exactly and we go through that as you yeah. know uh, the the Mindelio the Mindelio. scenario yeah and and then 2005 there is a conversation about constitutional change that yeah. doesn't Please. go through mm. so that plays out like the katiba scenario mm. 2007 mm. the country disintegrates mm. and it mirrors the civil the the, my, the el nino scenario mm. Mm. and so that even made me think mm. Mm. this is what i am mm. meant to do in mm. life mm. because thinking back you mm. can you can do research mm. analysis and begin to front load issues mm. or in a sense mm. implement change processes before rather than after yeah. the fact yeah. yeah because of this work again mm. um i was co-opted into the vision 2030 mm-hmm. and how that was is that initially the vision 2030 was a an economic vision for okay. kenya mm-hmm. mm. and the argument we made based on these conversations and that work mm-hmm. was that um you will not have a successful successful economic growth if you don't have the political structures and institutions to support that yeah but also if you as don't well have the social, social fabric exactly that that has the goodwill right to support that mm. and 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 
So the political and social pillar were late comers mm. in the Vision 2030, mm. but Just I consider it an economic one at the beginning. Yes, mm. and I consider it a, an input that Institute mm. of Economic Affairs and mm. SID right. made mm. in that regard. Mm. So I was part of that team, mm. and mm. I, to my knowledge, I think I was the youngest of mm. the team members mm. of the working group. Well done. And so mm. I wrote the youth chapter. Mm. Um, the youth, women, and vulnerable groups, those were lumped mm. together. Mm. Mm. In hindsight, I look back and I don't think I was the best person to write the, the gender part of the work. Mm. Why, um, why would you say that? Because I, you know, of course, um, there's been all this, you know, uh, gender debates mm. about equality and stuff like that. Mm. I didn't understand those at mm. the time. To the extent that to the understand. extent that I needed to write uh, that I was oh, incorporated right. to mm. write to be the one to mm. write that chapter. Mm. So I think we did a short change right there. Mm. But my interest in youth issues then began to grow mm. from there. And that's where you, I mean, but where what you feel you wrote for youth was yeah that yeah. was because i was a young person yeah. i pretty much had interacted with a lot of young mm, people mm, in mm. these conversations that then began to surface those issues yeah and, and, and you done around the country again i had learned how to do research exactly yeah. so mm. i could bring in some of those things mm. Uh, mm. into the conversation mm. so we were co-opted to do the vision itself mm -hmm. but also the first then uh mm. implementation plan mm. okay mm. so um that was interesting let's let's talk about that yeah what because it's it, it's a defining moment for yeah. the country it's um what it's youth vision 2030 yeah. let's call it that yeah. in, in a way mm -hmm. i mean it's a vision 2030 for the country but you are writing the the youth the, the, part of it so yes. what did that entail what was included in it okay um yeah what was the process like what did it entail and mm -hmm. what then what ended up being included in it so um first of all the, there was a company that was hired mm -hmm. to lead the process which was the mckinsey company mm -hmm. but remember they were hired with a job description of doing the economic mm. pillar mm. so the rest that remember, was the original mandate yeah mm. and so we are bringing in political so the mandate mm. is changing mm. and they acknowledge they don't really have the capacity mm. to be able to do this but you see mm. they have tools and methodologies mm. they use mm. so they kind of as mm. they do their part we mm -hmm. get to then follow on mm. to build the pillar, the economic and the social pillar. Yeah, we so is instructed. Is, no, 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 no. The technical. So experts. the technical team mm -hmm. that had been put together mm -hmm. by by uh, then the Ministry of Planning, but then now they had a division, I think, mm. that was then in charge of Vision 2030, mm -hmm. and Dr. Gakuru was who was heading the Ministry of Planning at the time. I cannot remember. Anna, but no. Doctor, G no, no, hmm. Prof. I think was Anya, if mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. All right. But uh, Doctor Gakuru mm -hmm. was the head of the Vision oh, 2030. Oh, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, he came to our office mm -hmm. because they were collecting views, and mm -hmm. that's how I got co-opted. Right. It. And and so we then had they had put together a working team, mm -hmm. and that working team would meet at KICC, mm -hmm. and I got the opportunity to work with Professor Michael Chege, mm -hmm. a brilliant mind. Mm -hmm. And and that's how sort of like um yeah we mm. then would just there was really like directive on what mm. what we need now mm. from you then we go and work and mm. then we bring the results mm. Mm. yeah so that's how we worked until the document was launched mm. yeah mm. so your technical team yes so you as a writer yes. for the youth yeah you are in so i have a job at ia you have a but job i at... have i'm i'm doing this it's, it's not so, on the side it's, it's not on the side it's, it's part, part of, of my your, job it's part of your tio yeah. tor yeah um but you're spending quite a bit of time, of time. with with yeah. with the technocrats yes. with the other technocrats yeah. but are you working with other guys so you're the pen holder for the mm -hmm. for the youth yeah. are there other youth yeah. so there wasn't anyone else who was young. I was writing the chapter by myself. By yourself. But you see, you have a writer for, let's say, yes. uh, the political uh, yeah, issues. Yeah. You have writers for uh -huh. a few of the elements of the economic yeah, pillar. You yeah. have writers, KNBS. I mean, the, 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 the government had also brought in their officers mm -hmm. in the different. Mm. So you see, like any technical working group, mm. you have stakeholder representation. So yes. you have government officials, mm. but you have c civil society organization mm. representatives. Yes. So it may be one or two people, mm. but you're coming in in your writers, quote unquote, an expert mm. to come in and, mm. and do and make a contribution. Mm. So I was part of the team in that regard. Mm. But mm. as far as I remember, I'm, mm. the, I'm one of the only ones that was doing mm. 
mm. really holding the mm. youth pillar mm. Mm. Yeah. um and who, who would be sort of the what are they uh-huh, called the person to report to yeah the, the person, social group had mm. a leader uh-huh. the political group had, had a, leader. a leader yeah yeah because so the uh, professor michael chege for example uh-huh. led one i can't remember which pillar mm. he did mm. but you see because by virtue of his role as a government mm. advisor mm. i mean his mm. wealth of experience yeah. so you have advisors mm. like those that mm. then mm. and there's an interface between the technical team yeah. and the political yeah i team can imagine that, yeah needs yeah. to put that together yeah. because this needs to be translated into policy yeah right? yeah Yeah. yeah. So it was a very interesting process. I had never worked with government before. Yeah. So very interesting working cultures and dynamics mm, there. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. And getting exposed to all these exactly. people yeah. and being uh, sitting on the table with yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> being in the I mean during the launch we mm. had pretty much the ministers and and we were all together in mm. that one room which was pretty nice. Yeah. For a young person that is whoa good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And Uh, all right so yeah. that that process for vision 2030 yeah. and 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 writing the youth chapter also adds i mean borrows from what you have been the mm-hmm. views that you have been collecting and yeah. and uh, i mean the conversations we've been having around yeah. the country yeah. uh for a different piece of work yeah. and it also begins to connect to a lot of a lot more of what you'll do yeah. but at this stage it's also beginning to um to shape uh to shape to shape me as a futurist yeah. because mm-hmm. now this is a vision for the country mm. so i mean it gives you a different perspective about vision mm. right as a mm. futures exercise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. watching mckinsey work mm-hmm. as an international company mm. and of course the learnings i have from i is another mm. different exposure mm. hanging out with akina prof mm. i mean that's another mm. very mm. interesting you know dynamic mm. there and so it begins to help me become mm. a, aspirational mm. about what then will my career look like mm-hmm. i don't mind being a now a big time policy researcher mm. analyst and you know mm. and so, so that's a lot of these things then build mm. up into the aspiration mm. of who mm. then i want to mm. become mm.